Very warm greetings to one and all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Now we are at adding brotherly kindness to godliness. Adding brotherly kindness to godliness. Now let's turn tonight. Let's turn tonight to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Let us read verses 16. All right, 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18, reading. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother hath need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us turn to God in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we bow before you, giving you thanks for safe travel to thy house, and that we are able to come in person to petition for your kingdom and for each other for your work's sake. Father, we come once again pleading for cleansing, washing in the blood of our Saviour, acknowledging, O Lord, our sins are great and many, often sinning against you without even realising. O Lord, be merciful. And Father, we do pray that you would be with us tonight to help us to understand this passage well so that we will grow. Lord, we need to grow, lest we forget the manner of person we used to be and go back to what we were and bringing your name to shame. So be with us now, Lord, we pray that you remove all distraction and tiredness. And Lord, teach us from your word that we may not only understand, but we may truly live out what we learn regarding brotherly kindness. We ask and plead all this in Jesus' name. Amen. What is brotherly kindness? So we keep memorizing, adding brotherly kindness to, uh, uh, to godliness, right? So what is it? The word as we've studied, in fact, let me see if anyone remember. Um, Ichung, what's the word brotherly kindness in Greek? Right, Philadelphia. Philos is love. Adelphos is brother. So, Philadelphia, right? That's where we get the word Philadelphia. Um, the Greek word means brotherly kindness, brotherly love, brotherly love. That is what it means. But when we say we want to add brotherly kindness to godliness, now, what, the, what should it look like? Well, very simply, it is literally treating, loving one another like family, family. That is why the word brother is used. And as I mentioned, the word brethren is used hundreds of times in the New Testament. And it is also the same concept in the Old Testament, how good it is for brother, brethren to dwell together in unity. So this word is a constant reminder that the Christians, we are really brothers and sisters in Christ. That is why it's called the church family. And in the New Testament, it's emphasized very strongly, repeatedly referring Christians um, as brethren to one another. All right? So when we say, what is it like to love as, uh, to have brotherly kindness to others? How do I add this? Well, just really think of how you would treat your family members how you care for them, love them, be kind to them, is the same. In fact, we saw last week, this was what made Christianity different from the world. And Christ told the disciples, by this they will know that you are my disciples. The Christian must add this to our lives. If your friends, your relatives, do not see that you love your church family and those in the church, like as if... It is so different from what they see in the world that it's as if your 
They are like your siblings. Then we have failed. So what is brotherly kindness? Adding this to godliness. When you look at one another from now onwards, to add brotherly kindness means I see the other person as family, as family. And we said there's the vertical and the horizontal. All the adding thus far is the vertical towards God. And these last two, brotherly kindness and charity, talks of the horizontal. It's like the cross. Love towards God, love towards men. The two great commandments. And the reminder is this. If we do not add brotherly kindness, the bottom line is what we've been reading in First Peter, we have not grown. We, we are barren. We are barren. So if you look at your life and say, look, I've been faithful in studying God's word. I've been faithful in serving God, whatever the church asked me to do. I'm very willing to help. I'm also giving to the Lord's work. And you think that, well, that is growing. That is good. It is incomplete. Based on this formula that God gives for the Christian to grow, it includes brotherly kindness. If it's something that's absent, you say that you're someone who is very shy, very introvert. Um, it's not like you, just not you. Well, that is why you need to grow. That is the whole point. If that is not you, God says, yes, you have been godly. You've been, you've been adding godliness into your life. That's good. But I need you to know now, if you do not add this brotherly kindness, you are not growing and you will soon fall. You will soon forget that you've been cleansed for your old sins. That's what Peter said. Those who do not add, they forget that they've been cleansed from their old sins. You just forget that that is what God saved you away from, away from a life that is just very inward focused, away from a life that is just about me. Even if I'm good enough for God, I'm obeying Him, serving Him, well, that is, that is good enough. God says, no, I saved you also to live, to love the brethren. All right? So that is last week's revision. We must add this. If you have not been such a person, it is time to change. That is the whole point. And change is painful. Growth is always painful. When you do bodybuilding, exercising your muscles, it's always painful, that growth. Now, so this week, we said, we understand the principle. It is about really looking at each other as family, all right? How you will love your family members. That is brotherly kindness. Now, what are the practical um, examples? What is this? In fact, tonight's message is growth. Growth. It is about practical brotherly love, practical brotherly kindness. What is it like in the Bible? Well, as you have read, now turn back to 1 John, all right? Look at 1 John. Chapter 3, verse 16. Now, John 3.16 tells us about the love of God. 1 John 3.16 reminds us about the love of God and how it ought to affect us. It's an easy way to remember, right? How the love of God in, first, in John 3.16 ought to affect us after salvation. Now he says, because Christ laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the same word, brethren, brethren. Now God here is not talking about your family members. Most of us are willing to die for our blood siblings. I hope. But here God is saying, because you are a child of God, then you are in the family of God, that is what you must be like. So those of you who wonder, really love, love my church fellowship worshippers, fellow worshippers like my family members? Yes, because God says, die for your brethren. Lay down your life for your brethren. So yes, that is what it means. Do not have any doubt that God expects us to love the church, your church um, fellow um, brother and sisters in Christ like that, like that. Now then he says, then he explains some practical examples of this brotherly love. Don't talk about laying down your life and dying if you are not willing 
to fulfill verse 16 and 17. All right? Don't talk about dying for your brethren. Here he gives the practical example. Now I want to help us to learn brotherly kindness with these alphabets. All right? With these uh, letters, I mean. With these letters. So a Christian that cares, cares, C-A-R-E-S, C-A-R-E-S, the Christian that cares for the brethren with brotherly kindness. So tonight we learn about the C, about the C. The C is about compassionate care. Not just any care, but compassionate care. Now look at verse 16. Hereby, uh, sorry, verse 17. But whoso hath this world's goods, good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? How can you say that the love of God dwells in you? The love of God means you have a love for God and you have a love for others. The love that God puts in your heart. You do not have that love. Now here you see the word in italics, right? The word um, of compassion is in italics. Means the King James translators let us know they've added this word to help us understand the Greek. Because in Greek, it simply has the word bowels. Now, if they don't clarify, um, um, shutteth up his bowels from him. It makes no meaning in English. All right? Shut up your stomach, your spleen, your liver, your insides from him. It has no meaning. So they add this to help people understand. So in, in Greek, they talk about it, they understand. What, what is the inside? What moves inside? It's the compassion. When you're filled with compassion, you can literally feel your heart, your, your internal organs, right, move inside you. Now, it's that kind of deep care for others. It is not a passing concern. Hence, I choose the word compassionate care. So, this bowels means compassion. This word is used to mean the seat of emotion. So every time you read this word, bowels of compassion in the Bible, it means the seat of emotion in man. The emotions especially of tenderness, the emotions of, um, of mercy, the emotions of kindness, of love. So when God says, all these emotions in you are moved, are moved when you see that your brother is in need. Now, what is this adding brotherly kindness? It is not just, well, you, you outwardly obey the commandment and you add brotherly kindness, just do kind things. No, it's something that comes very genuinely inside you. Again, you say, I'm not such a person. Now, that's the point. God said, add brotherly kindness because after salvation, that is what I will help you to be. Last week we studied, right? By the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, God has put this love in you. You will have some, all right? There will be in you. But now God says, you must add. You must now, when God moves, you must respond. And if the, it is absent, you pray. We studied that last week as well. What's the way to have this, this passion, this love? You say, that's not me. Then you pray. The godly man, one of the traits of the godly man, he prays. What do you pray for? Lord, make me such a person. Whether even you're a teenager, you're a young person, you're an elderly person, we must add that into our lives. You say, no, that, I don't feel that kind of move. Yes, I have some concern. I, I, do gen, I am genuinely concerned. But God says, the thing that you need to add is bowels of compassion. Something that moves you. Now, but the other thing that we must practically understand after knowing that I must pray for this, I must be such a person. If I'm not, I must be. All right? Don't take pride in I, I'm, a, I'm a very cool person, um, stoic person. Don't take pride in that. God says, no, then you do not have brotherly kindness. Now, but we often read this because of um, the brother in need and uh, gift to the brother. We often think that it is about giving financially, right? Financially or possessions kind of thing. Now, it includes that. It includes that. 
But practically, what does it really include as well? All right, so without a doubt, look at verse 17, but whoso ha have this world's good and seeth his brother have need. So the things that you have physically, yes, and your brother is in need, okay? You must not withhold. You must not withhold. You must give. Yes, you must help financially. I know some of you will be wondering, well, is it anybody who say, I have need, can you, can you um, give me $100 you should give? We will study that because it's love also in truth, right? Look at verse 18. But in deed and truth, in deed and in truth. So God does address that. So we'll learn along the way. But just focus on this genuine need, all right? So a brother is in genuine physical financial need. Now God says, the Christian must act. That's why he says, not just in, in um, neither in tongue, but in deed. Indeed, the Christian must act, must give, must be willing. Now, but if you look at this word, so I think physically, financially, we, we are clear, we should help, all right? But I want to address this issue because most of us say well in church i don't think there are many people like that right not much chance to add brotherly kindness because i don't think there's anyone in such dire need all the time frequently that we need to give financially physically to the person most of us have sufficient right so you say oh all right nothing much to do then that is because of the failure to understand look at verse 17 hath this woes good hath this world's good. Again, if we think that this world's good means financial and physical, then you look at verse 17, whoso had this world's good. Then you will again think, you know, I'm financially not that well off. Many people in church, they have more than me, physically, financially. So there's nothing much I can add in terms of brotherly kindness. Wrong. Again, we need to understand what this is. Whoso, whoso had this world's good. Now, notice it is not world's goods, but world's good. This word good in Greek simply means, is, is the word bios, B-I-O-S, bios, bios. You know biology, biology, bios. Means living, living. So, world's good simply means things that are needed for living on earth is it only money is it only physical things because if it's just that most of us feel there's nothing much i need to add in church right but this is the brethren this is not doing charity work outside this is about christians brethren i said most brethren are better than me now it includes anything that your brother needs to live to, to go through life on earth, put it this way, to go through life on earth, they may have physical and financial things, but there are some things that they need help in in order to go through some things in life. And it's woes good, means life on earth. Life on earth. It's a very practical, real situation. They are life on earth. So it includes time. It includes talents, includes abilities, in includes um, um, help of any kind. So it's not always just about, about cooking food for them, giving them money, love gift. It's more than that. Now then, once you understand that, then the whoso re refers to all of us. You can't say, I'm not as rich, so not much brotherly kindness I can add. No, you have many things in your life that you are able to go through, help you make a living, help you, some skills, some experience of life, that another brethren who may be financially and uh, physically well off than you, that he needs. So when you say, um, but whoso had this world's good and seeth his brother have a need. What is this need? This need is something that you have that they are lacking in. Not just financial. No, it can be 
as simple as experience, work experience that you have. So God says now, if you see someone struggling with some, some living on earth, maybe the person just, just, just joined the workforce and struggled with, with adapting to the workforce. Uh, you got money now, right? We prayed for this person for so long, got money already. He has a job already. All right, I can forget about him. No, then now you say, what is his next need? Can I help this person? Right? Sometimes I'm glad some of those who are working in the world, they see some young Christian joining the workforce. After prayer meeting, I hear you all advising the young person because they are struggling. Say, I'm struggling. It's very difficult working life. So they are having a real struggle on earth. Right? They may be earning more than you even, but they have a need. They are struggling. Now it could be also like parenting. Parenting. You say that family is richer than us has two cars, we only have one, or we don't even have a car. So I don't think there's not, nothing much I, can, I need to think about them, nothing much to add. A new mother, a new father, you have the experience, the skills, you know what they're going through, you've gone through that. It's not just giving them like, these are all my, um, my kids have outgrown, so here, here is the socks, here are the socks, here are the um, winter clothes and all that. I have added that brotherly kindness. You have, because it includes those things. But now, as we understand this, to them they receive many, but what they really need, what they're struggling with, is how to bring up a child. I have no experience, or I've only experienced with one. Now, how to handle two, how to handle three? I'm struggling. Now, that is when you have to say they have a need. Now, you have to help. You cannot shut up your bowels of compassion. I also have my problem. They have their problem. Um, I have no time to think about that. We've already given them, you know, all the winter clothes and all the summer clothes and all the prams and the car seats. And that's it. It is more than that. Are you like that with your own siblings? You see your own sibling at home. They are more well-off than you, but you know they have some struggles in life. You will go out of the way because of the bowels of compassion. Now, can you please turn to Romans 12.10? All right, but keep a finger here, all right, in First John. Romans 12.10. I said last week we will use scriptures to help us learn practically about this brotherly kindness. Romans 12, verse 10. Can we re read Romans 12, verse 10 together? Romans 12.10, reading. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honour preferring one another. Now, this word brotherly love is the same word, Philadelphia. But how does Paul describe Philadelphia? Be kindly affectioned one to another with Philadelphia. So Philadelphia has this kind, kindly affection concept. Kindly affection. It is more than as long as they're physical things. We have helped them. It's again, the word kindly affection is very close to the word Philadelphia. Philadelphia has to do with family, brothers, siblings. Kindly affection has to do with parental love towards children, children towards parents, family again. So he, he emphasizes doubly this this genuineness of family concern. It is not just we give physical things. Isn't that how it is at home? What, what troubles you most in your heart when you see your family members struggle? Is it just financial, physical? You know that's easy to help them by and large. Most of us can help them financially. But it's always you see them struggling with family life, work life, um, or even some things that, that they do not know how to handle, all right? That is what troubles you, the kindly affection that will move you and say, can I help? You don't just say, we've, given, we've, we've been nice to them already, we've given them this, we buy things for their children, and that's it. So we must, we must look beyond the physical. And God says, whosoever, whoso hath, whoso hath, means God says there is no exception 
We all have some skill, all have some time, all have some, um, some um, abilities that is useful to add to help someone else. We have. So he's not just saying, well, the rich, please take note of this. Not at all. Not at all. Not just directed at the, those that have to help the have-nots. All right? Whatever resources. Now, students, you think about, or let's stay with the family. All right? You stay with the family. So you help, and you say, yeah, this, this mother is really struggling. How can I take time to call, to visit, to talk to this person, to seek out this person, to help with the experiences that we've gone through, that we've learned from God? Now, in truth, huh? love in truth. Indeed, yes, you're doing it in truth. Please don't give carnal, ungodly um, um, psychology, worldly psychology kind of advice. That's not in truth. You're not loving in truth. You're loving in error, all right? So how can you do that? So some of them, they do not know how to. They come to church, they struggle. So you come to church, what, how can I help this person? This person is struggling coming to church. How can I encourage them, help them? So sometimes in husbands, we, we share, right? The husband will share. This, this is how we schedule the time. This is how you're, you're adding brotherly kindness with a genuine concern. You really want them to be able to come, to grow, to learn, all right? But you must be ready to receive help, all right? So some, they are not willing to receive help. So you add brotherly kindness, but they reject it. They are not interested. But you still must be kindly affectionate. You still need to pursue. And please respond. Please respond when it is love in truth for you. Now, likewise for students. What about students? Brotherly kindness. Another Christian in, in church is struggling with certain subjects. And you know, all right? Love in truth means you want the person to be able to continue to grow spiritually, to come study God's word, to serve God and all that. But you know that person is struggling with that. What do you do? Help. Students, this would be the last thing on your mind if you think have this world's good means money. You say, I don't have. I don't even have pocket money. All right? So what, is there, what brotherly kindness do I have to add? Whoso includes teens, includes uni students, help, be concerned. You see a, young, a, young Christ, uh, a younger um, uni student, you're in the same course. Think of how to extend brotherly kindness, how to help. All right? Now this in truth is, is not just pure earthly help, that's all. This is, is added. World's good, yes, it's earthly, but in deed and in truth, it is still always linked to their spiritual good. How to help? How to help them? Be interested. Say, I better don't ask. If I ask the person to ask me questions, then I'm going to spend time helping this person. I got no time. We all have. We all have some time to help. Right? So think of all these things that actually we can do to help one another. Right? Students don't say, wow, you know, if I've got to help this person, this person is quite dumb, you know. I will spend a lot of time. Or, well, you know, this person is not very smart. I help this person. What can the person help me in return? Love in truth also means sincerity, kindly affection. You don't help a sibling just because you think the sibling is rich and, will, and can give you some more money in return. Or you benefit something. When it comes to siblings, you don't think like that. So likewise in church. Now understand this. The point is helping the brethren is. Help is, is helping church. You must understand that. All right? It's church family. You're helping the church family. That is what it is. So you say, I want to grow to be more like Christ. God already said Christ laid down his life. So this is how we ought to be. I want to grow like Christ. And therefore, the area that I could not help myself. I was rich. I was healthy. I had a lot of things, but I was going to hell. The one thing that I did not have was 
the ability to save myself. And God solved that problem. He came to help. He came to help. He did not need to help us. He does not benefit from us. So it's the same concept. If you want to be Christ-like, you say, I want to be like God. For God so loved, He gave. Then the principle is, I must give of my time. You see, give of money, while it is difficult for some, but sometimes it is, they rather give money. I'd rather throw money and then after that I can have time to enjoy my pleasures, my, 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 um, my recreation, my sleep. I just give them money instead of helping. Some things money cannot help. And that is where things that you have experienced, things, the skills, the abilities that God has given you, that is where you can help. All right? You can lift someone up to help them. Now, the elderly, they needed help to know how to access our YouTube websites, right? So I was very thankful the young people, when we called you, you came for Seniors Fellowship, and all of you sat there and helped them, helped them. Now, this is brotherly kindness. They don't need money from you, but this is what they need help in, technology. We can't be impatient. Ah, this elderly is so, so blur waste my time brotherly kindness is not like that actually some of the children are like that right it's so common children look down on parents because they're slow in technology and now if you cannot love your parent enough to be patient to help them with technology then it will be very difficult for you to say i want to add brotherly kindness to others you will be impatient you will not care right now transportation is another issue another thing Transportation for church. Some, they have struggled, they have genuine struggles, they have difficulties, right, to help. Some of you are willing to. Now, these are, so now we begin to think it is beyond all this. Now, now here it is, it says, now please look at First John chapter 3. Now, look at verse 17. Whoso, means any one of us, hath this world's good. All of us have some. All of us have some. Definitely, all right? And seeth his brother have need. You also know that others have. So you have, you see your brother do not have and have need for some help. Now he said, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. Now what does it mean? Shutteth up his bowels. Means you actually harden your heart. You steal your heart, you harden it. You ignore, you choose, and you decide to ignore. You have, you see, but you choose to ignore. Just give you an example, and you try to apply in other areas in your life. You know someone in church needs, needs help on something. You know. And then you come for a prayer meeting or Bible study. Then after that, you can go help the person. All right? Maybe it's to repair something in the car. The person is very poor. The person um, struggles with it. I can't even afford to have this repaired or, or do something. Shut up mercy means, shut up bowels of compassion means you know, you're aware, you've seen, but you've been told. But I say, I'd rather chit chat with the church people. You know, I've been looking forward to catch up with someone. And it's so cold outside. And this person is poor. There's nothing much this person can do for me in return, right? I have, this, I have skills to help, but this person has no skills to help me in return. Or I don't want to get my hands dirty. You know, but you choose to. You choose to ignore. You choose to not to think about it. You choose to do what you like to do. There's the shut up. Shut up. You don't give access to it, Right? So, now this then, God says, you are, you are heartless. Shut up, bowels of mercies. Another way to describe is, you're heartless. It doesn't move your heart. You choose to ignore despite knowing. Now, look at verse 16. Uh, verse 17, sorry. Then God says, how dwelleth the love of God in him? 
you cannot say that you have added brotherly kindness. It is absent in your life. How can you say the love of God dwells in you for the, brother, for the brethren? It is not there. It is not there. Love in truth means you cannot be hypocritical. Now, but the last thing is to ask ourselves today. Why is it that I would shut up my bowels of compassion? What is the hindrance? What causes that problem? What causes that problem? Now, remember we are studying adding brotherly kindness to godliness, correct? To add this, you are, you are like sibling. I'm willing to sacrifice my, what I have to help you, right? That is what it means. You need to add this to godliness. Now, what is it that will hinder us to say, I will grow into that, I will pray for that, and I will actively do that? What's the barrier? What do you think it is? Now, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Now, let's read verses 6 to 8. 6 to 9, sorry. 6 to 9, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 9. Reading. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Now here is the answer. God says, godliness with contentment is great gain. Now this gain means a spiritual gain, a spiritual growth. Godliness with contentment will give you great spiritual gain. Back to the formula of growth. God does not say just be godly. I say if you're, you add godliness, yes, good that you add godliness in this formula, but if you don't add contentment, godliness with contentment, if your godliness does not have contentment added to it, you will fall into temptation. You will drown yourself in destruction and perdition. Why? Why? Because you will to be rich. The problem with us shutting up, what leads, the problem that leads us to shut up our, our bowels of compassion is discontentment. We have clothes and raiment not good enough. I have more things. I'm not going to give to help the brethren. I, if I give physically or if I give of my time, I have less time to do well in my studies, my own studies. I'm not content. I'm not content with passing. I'm not content with good results. I'm only content with excellent results. And if spending more, keeping time to myself, helping another person in church means I have less time to, to gain whatever that you're seeking after. Because you are not content, you want to have more for yourself. That is why you will shut up your vows of compassion. Do you understand why God says godliness must be added with contentment? If not, you will not grow because you won't go beyond this adding godly, uh, brotherly kindness and charity in your life. You will be stagnant. Yes, you have this vertical part, but God says this vertical part alone is not growth. You will fall eventually again. This horizontal part must be present. Contentment is the problem with us. That is what it is. Now God says, we brought nothing into this world. We cannot carry anything out. 
that includes your time, man. That includes your job title. That includes the praise of men. It's not just, just physical things. Whatever it is that you feel that now, if I help someone, then I won't progress as much myself. God says, you can't take it with you. You know, someone asked about this person, this reporter interviewed um, this family member of Rockefeller. You know Rockefeller? Rockefeller um, was one of the richest men in the United States. It's believed that he was, his riches back then is even more than the billionaires, the, the, the richest man today, all right? This is Elon Musk or something, right? He says it's more than his. And when they ask him, ask, ask the person who knew him, no, how much, how much did Rockefeller leave behind? Right? People want to know how much did he leave behind? You know what's the answer the person gave? Oh, that's an easy one to calculate. What's the answer? Everything. Everything. He could not take one single thing with him. Not one single cent, not one single praise of men, not one single um, reputation that he gained on earth. He left behind everything. Now, so God says, look at life this way. What you help others, there is, there is growth. You keep it all yourself, there's only losses. Now, I'm not saying you do that because of that. So do we understand why we tend to only care for ourselves? We are not happy enough with what we have. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Now, if you have some abilities to help others, now this need does not mean that the person is in dire straits, all right? It's anything that you're able to help the other person. God says you show brotherly kindness means you do that. Aren't we like that with family members? Let me ask you. Your husband say, you know, oh, quite thirsty. What do you do? You're very happy to go to the kitchen to get water. Your wife says, um, it's quite cold. You're very happy to go and grab extra blanket for her and in the middle of the night, get out, get out of the cold bed just to get the blanket for her, right? God says, this is how we ought to be with the brethren. It's exactly that example. You say, someone knock on your door for help, and say, go away, be warm. I don't want to get out because it's cold, and I don't want to wake my children. Don't disturb me. It's selfishness. It's what I want to keep for myself, right? But with family, we are willing to do that. You don't say, well, are, you, are you freezing to almost dying? Oh, if you're almost dying, all right, I'll get a blanket for you. Are you thirsting to your dying, dying or not? Dying or dying, I'll get water for you. You don't, right? You're not saying dire need. If you're in an area of work, in an area of ability to help a brother that will help his life. Now, not help him to be lazy, all right? We'll come to that later. Not help him to be lazy. That can help this person. Especially help him, love him in truth. Help him to, to save time, to serve God better, to, to, to study God's word better. So I have within my means to help this person. God says, do it, do it, all right? So this is a very different picture of what we think, just give money, give physical things, and or dying already, or lots of trouble, then okay, I'll spend some time to help you grudgingly. No, it is just that, that, that kindly affection towards another, that bowels of compassion towards another. So this is what God says the Christian must begin to add in our lives. Now, what is A, what is R, what is E, what is S, we'll learn in the following weeks. But let us begin to ask ourselves. Don't look at the other person. Don't say, yeah, 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 no, that person was like that. I needed some help. I wasn't even asking for money. It won't help me. Don't think about all this. Now, please look at this and then we close. Look at chapter 3, verse 17. Now, this is a very searching verse. This is a verse that, that, that digs deep into, it's like God's hand reaching deep into, through our mouth, deep into our hearts. It's very deeply searching, all right? First John chapter 3, verse 17. But whoso, have, whoso hath this world's good 
and seeth his brother hath need, and shutteth up his bowels. How dwelleth out the love of God in him? How dwelleth? You know, it is a very searching thing. Do not think about who this applies to. Tonight, it's time for us to really put our conscience deep, search deep into our conscience because look at verse 17. Uh, if you read it this way, I was just reading it this afternoon and it's, it's really very searching. Look at verse 17. Whoso I have, whoso hath, whoso hath, means God says, every one of you have something. That is how the Greek is phrased. Everyone have something that is useful for life, for living. Whoso hath, that means each one of us. Whoso hath, and seeth his brother have need. Means you're aware that someone, that you have something that can help someone and shutteth up. And shutteth up. It is very, very um, jarring when you read it this way. You have, you see, but you shut up. You have, you see, but you shut up. Has that been our life? We just avoid knowing so that we don't have to help anyone. But God says, but indeed and in truth, let's act. Let's do something. Let's take action. Let's move. Let's find out. You must know the needs of your brothers. This is what we'll learn more next week. Let us turn to God in prayer. Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, we are among the whoso have some skills, some experience in life, some abilities, some time, some finances, some possession that can definitely help another. We see people who are new, they are struggling to do something. Oh Lord, we pray that we will not harden our hearts because we are not contented. We are not contented. We want more for ourselves. That is why we are not willing to give of any of this things that will help them in their lives. So be with us and meet with us in the place of prayer. Lord, we ask that you help us, Lord, to pray earnestly by thy Spirit so that the work of your kingdom can further and the lives of believers can be strengthened to serve you, love you, and glorify you better. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.